Hey guys, it's Stuart from Twisted Core here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create fully customizable ghost buttons in simply HTML and CSS. Okay, so for this project, all we need are two simple files. We need an index.html file, and we'll need a style.css file. Now we'll start the setup just by addressing the start of the HTML document with the usual stuff, a doc type. HTML tag to open the document, a header tag to place our links, and we'll refer to the CSS file we've just created, link href CSS and rel style sheet. And then we'll go on and we'll create the body tags. So since we want our ghost buttons to be links, we're going to put an A tag in here and we're going to give it class ghost we can give it the text we want here. For example, we'll just say download. That could be our one. And since it's not going to link anywhere, we'll just put a hashtag here so that the link has a hover clicky hand button when you hover over it. Let's give the page a bit of style. We'll change the background of the body class just to black. And that way we'll be able to see our transparent ghost buttons when they're layered on top of it. Um, an often used effect with a ghost button is making a large background image be the, the background for the body and that way you're able to see the whole image and the buttons don't obscure anything. It's a very nice visual effect. So we start to aggress the ghost button by doing an a.ghost. Now that refers to the a tag with the ghost class. And we'll open up those tags there. Now the colour this is just the text colour of the um, the ghost button, and we're going to make that white because that's where we want it to start off. So we'll do hashtag f5f5f5. It's a nice hue of white. And then we're going to create a border for it. Now we're going to have a very thin one pixel border, and it's going to be solid, and it's also going to be f5f5f5. Now you can change either of these colours. Um, the recommended idea is to keep the both the color and the border color the same, so that you get the you get the ghost button effect, and that is the ghost button effect. Similar colors that will change when they're hovered. Okay, so that's it for the colors. Now we're going to change the way they're displayed. So we're going to display them as inline blocks. Now this means that they can be lined up next to each other. Oh, inline block rather. This means they can be lined up next to each other in a row. We're going to change the width. to 200 pixels for this example. I give it a decent sized ghost button and you can obviously increase it if you're thinking of putting more text or decreasing it if you want to put less text in there. We'll give it a bit of padding around the edges. Let's say an even eight pixels so we get a bit of padding around the edges of the text and the button isn't too squished. We'll give it a margin and this margin is just so there's space in between the buttons when they're placed next to each other so we'll put a margin of 10 pixels here and we want to text align at center. Now this is just going to put the text that's inside the button in the center of the button. And text decoration is going to definitely be none. And this removes the underline that you get when you hover over a link. Okay, and now it's time for the animations that we get here. So we're going to add the transition tag. I'm going to do a transition and the only things we're going to change here are the color. And we're going to do a 0.3 seconds. You can change this mode to anything you like, obviously. Ease out. We're also going to do um, a background color. 0 0.3 seconds. Ease out. Now, the reason for having a background color tag here is because when we have the ghost hover pseudo class, we're going to add in a background color. And we want when you leave the hover zone with your mouse, we want the background color to fade out rather than just disappearing instantly. So let's see how this looks so far, shall we? Open up your text file in your favorite web browser, or in this case, launch the live preview in brackets. And you'll see you've got this sort of rough looking outline of a ghost button here. Now, this obviously isn't the effect we're going for, so we're gonna edit this and change some of the parts of it. So first of all, let's address the problem here. We've got this horrible default Windows text. Now you can change the font to anything you like, but for this we're just going to use an pre-installed font, we're going to use Calibri. 
we'll just do font family and then in quotation marks here Calibri and cut that off and instantly we've got a much nicer font there so when I hit save that'll be that we'll add this will automatically add the prefixes to the transitions which is something you're always going to have to remember when doing projects that involve CSS transitions add WebKit before any transition or animation and there we go we've got a nice readable looking outline for our ghost button okay so now we're going to address the ghost hover class so we just take a.ghost again and we're going to do a colon here and we're going to type hover we're also going to address at the same time a.ghost the focus class now this is a class when you've clicked on something or you maybe moved your finger away and the hover has stopped um, it's kind of hard to describe, it happens mostly on mobile and on uh, web applications where you don't actually leave the page when you click on a href, like for example you just click it and you don't change page, the link just stays highlighted. And that's the focus class. And we're going to keep those the same for this so we don't have any inconsistencies when somebody doesn't fully click on a button. Okay, so the things that we're changing when we go to the hover class is obviously the background colour. And we want the background colour to be white now. So we're going to make that F5, F5, F5. And we're also going to change the color of the text to something different. Now, obviously, you can make it any color you like, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just make it black. And that's it for the changing of the actual looks of this. Now, all you need to do is add in your transitions. Now, if you noticed, on the first time we did the transition, we did an ease out on each of these. Now, we're simply just going to copy and paste the transition that we put here. Paste it in here, but we're going to change it to an ease in. Oops. <laughs> Don't look at that. And ease in on both of these. We click save and the auto prefix will add our transitions. We'll go back into our browser and we'll hit this and then there we go. That is it. Your simple ghost button hover has been achieved. Okay, so now that we've achieved our simple ghost button hover effect, I'm going to show you a few things you can do to customize your ghost button a little bit. Now, a popular thing is to change the width of the border. Oh, I'm sorry, the um, the radius of the border. Now, when you see this, it's a bit of an absolute. It's quite a flat button. It works well in a lot of designs, but sometimes you want something a bit more fun to play with. So we might be able to change the border radius here. So you just take border dash radius and you put um, how big you want the curve on the edge of the borders to be. Now, for, let's put five pixels in here, for example. We'll go and take a look at this. We've got a much more rounded, much more friendly looking button there for people to use. Now, since the padding and the margin, um, they just are extras on the edge, you can also change how, how large you want the buttons to be with simply the text size inside them. So, for example, if we put in here font size, we put in two EM units, the font's going to be a lot bigger and the button scales with it. So there's no worries about having to adjust the height of your buttons as long as they all have the same font size, they're all going to be the same height because it isn't actually a button, it's just an A tag style to have a box around it. So that's one thing you can do. You can also increase the timing for each of your transitions if you like. If you want a very slow transition, you can increase that and you can decrease that and whatever. You can see good examples of how these buttons have been used on pages like the Twisted Core homepage. This was the initial inspiration for this tutorial, was the way we designed the ghost buttons on here. Now we use slightly thicker borders on our site, and we also are changing the background colours differently for each button. And we're also fading in and fading out an icon in the centre here depending on the action. So there's limitless possibilities with what you can do with a ghost button, and this is just a very simple framework to show you where you can go from with a very simple and easy to follow design. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see even more tutorials from Twisted Core. As usual, the source code for this project will be in the description.